Welcome to today's Power Up Training. Today we're going to go over how to set up your summer camps within RecDesk. So the first step is on your Programs tab. We're going to click on Add New Program and we're going to type in the name of the program. So here's an important piece to think of when you're creating your programs is how you're naming it. Most of you are likely doing weekly options for your summer camp. So what you would do is you would say summer camp week one. Now, if you want this to go in a specific order, maybe you want the, uh, the programs to be listed in a certain order when they show up on the community site, or maybe you prefer to do this as a day by day program so that members can choose which day they're actually going to need you for summer camp for, for their summer camp purpose. And a shortcut, just so you're aware, uh, this custom program code is the area where you want to put the information in if you want your programs to show in a certain order. And the best way that we can encourage that is using two digit uh, codes like 01 instead of just typing in one, because then the system will recognize 01 as a smaller number than 10. So things like that will come into, come into play as you're um, creating your your uh, program. So once you've created the name, you're going to choose your type. So we've got summer camps. If you have a program subtype set up for your summer camps, maybe you offer both athletics and arts type or um, maybe even tech summer camp courses, you can break that down within the subtype. This drop-in support feature, if you are using our check-in feature, to check your kids in in order to track attendance and you're using the check-in feature over here and not the attendance feature, make sure you change drop-in support to yes with pre-registration required. That's going to make it so you can only check, check a child into that summer camp if they've already registered for it online. These are all options we want to be visible to the public because we want them to register online, so we want all the information to show. If you would like your summer camp to display as a different color, then you can come in here and you can choose any color in the color wheel. It's also a good idea to set an enrollment begin and end date for things like your summer camp. So if you set the enrollment begin date as today, and let's just say you're giving them till the end of March to register online. This is how you would set that up. Now, for those of you who have high volume enrollments, especially with your first year with RecDesk, I highly recommend that you set a specific time for when they can, in, they can register for your summer camps online. The reason being is because otherwise the system will default to midnight. So if you have people that wake up in between the time your office opens and midnight, they may end up filling your summer camp programs before you start your day. So just keep that in mind um, that you may want to set a specific time that it opens up at the time that your office opens. If you have a description for your summer camp, you can go ahead and either type that in or copy paste from an outside source. In the notes section, this is where you can put reminders like send your child with lunch, sunscreen, and anything else they may need. And if we check off this include notes on receipt, this is going to be, it's not only something they'll be able to see when they view the program, but when they register online in the email receipt, it's also going to include that note information. Next, you want to connect your general ledger code, and that's going to come in a drop down. If you charge sales tax, that's also found in the drop down, and just remember to apply sales tax to the program itself. And then you want to set up your demographics. So these are your restrictions. Are you is this summer camp something that is for boys only or girls or both? Do you have an enrollment minimum or a maximum? So if you say that you can only have 50 children in the in the program per week, then you want to set your enrollment maximum to 50. This is going to make it so that when the 51st child tries to register, they will not. They will, however, be able to add themselves to the wait list as long as you make sure that this box remains checked off. 
You can display the grade in the minimum and the grade maximum, but as a reminder, it is not going to restrict by age. If you have very strict age restrictions when it comes to your summer camps, you can put that here and say they need to be between the ages of four and 13, and they need to be that age by a certain date. So you would make want to make sure that you're also enforcing as of. Now I am not going to hit save for that piece so that if so that I can show this to you on a community checkout um, and my date of birth does not match this range. So the custom form questions are next. Some of you may use this for your summer camps and some may not. This is all dependent on your needs, but this is where you can get quickie questions like a text box for um, who uh, phone number to contact in case of an emergency, or you can do a text box multi-line for please list any allergies or medical conditions we should be aware of. Some people will use the drop-down list if you guys hand out t-shirts for your summer camp participants. This is where you'd be able to put in a label of t-shirt, enter the t-shirt sizes, and attach that to the registration process. And remember, the values just get separated by semicolons. And if you check this box off, it makes it so that field is required during the time of checkout. And the next step is setting up your schedule. So you're going to hit set reoccurring schedule. And if your camp starts at 8 a.m. and it goes until 5 p.m., then that's what we set up for the start and end time. And we're going to check off the days of the week since it's Monday through Friday. And I'm going to actually just mark this program as starting next month. I know that most of you are used to the summer months, but I'm just going to use this as an example. And you can say it ends after five occurrences because it's going to happen as a week. Then you want to assign which facility this is going to occur in. So you want to choose the classroom or the field that they're going to have summer camp at. And then click OK. This is the screen where you just want to review, make sure that all of these dates are dates you're going to be open and offering summer camp. If you're closed for any of these days, like 4th of July or the 3rd of July this year, since that's the Friday, you would just hit remove. Now, a big thing to remind everyone is if you see this red here, the remove buttons, or this alert, if you do not hit save, but you go to leave this page, you will lose your schedule. So red means you didn't save. So always make sure that you have, you see the edit and you see the green. I make the bad joke that green means go. So as long as you see this, the green edit button, you can move on to your next step of adding your fees. Now the fees are where we're really gonna get into a lot of variables and variable ways for you to set this up. Now for super simple uh, week, uh, summer camps, it's just gonna be a single fee of say $20 per week. And that's it, and that's how you set your fee up. Now, if you wanna make it so that they only have to pay a certain portion during the time they sign up, you wanna change this online payment option to minimum uh, deposit required at checkout and say they must pay $5 minimum to say that they wanna participate in each week of summer camp. Now, for those of you who don't want to collect the summer camp charges. Maybe you only want to collect on week one during registration, but the other weeks you want them to be able to pay later, you can choose the option of may pay later. That's going to make it so that parents have the choice of paying in full now. Maybe they already have the money or the space on the credit card to go ahead and put that charge through. They can do that now, or they'll be able to check a box off so that they can pay you later. You can also restrict your fees by memberships or by date ranges. So for those of you who do early bird fees where you know it's $20 if they register for the month of February, then it goes up to 30, you can set the effective date range. Now a big, huge reminder, if you're going to use this piece of the system and you say that this fee ends on February 29th, it is vital that the next fee you create you make that fee start date the very next day. 
Otherwise, you'll have a gap where people won't be able to register and you'll get a bunch of phone calls. So you don't need those. That's the way to get around that. This membership restriction piece, part of the reason I bring this up is because we've been hearing more and more that many of you are going to a system where you're charging, say, $25 for a registration fee and then $20 per week. A membership is the way best method to collect that $25 registration fee because it's going to ensure that your members have, a, have signed up for that membership before they can even apply here. Or I'm sorry, before they can even try to register. So that's all you would have to do is just set the restriction and what membership they must have in order to check out. Now I'm going to close this view for a moment because there's another piece that I've been seeing more and more that I'd like to discuss. Where we're hearing that some of you, you want to charge by the day of the week. Now, there's two ways to really, there's a few ways to go about doing this. The first is what I'm going to show you where you set up the actual fee for $0. And then down here, you're going to need five add-on fees. This way, you can have a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday option. Now, keep in mind um, that when you're adding these fee types, the system is not going to create rosters based off of this. You will need to pull the information to Excel to be able to sort so that you know, okay, here are my kids that signed up for Monday. Here are my kids that signed up for Tuesday. And I'll show you how to easily pull that information. Uh, as a quick reminder, the export full detail to Excel from your roster tab is going to let you pick and choose which fields you want to export. So that's how it would let you export and you would filter on the community site. Or I'm sorry, and you would filter within Excel. <clears throat> this add-on fee spot though is the, is the best way for smaller places to deal with that. Now, if you have another way where you have a 50, 50, per, 50 per day, and you know that that tends to happen, but it's not very fluid. It's not the same people coming every week. It's people that choose random days. You either need to create a program per date. And if you do that, I highly recommend you use two-digit month and two-digit two day. So 0108 for today as a way of entering that information. That will keep it in date order for you or you'll have to do this. Now we did have another group that decided to do a small workaround with our facility feature. And they created a facility that allows people to drop in. So this is a total workaround. This is not encouraged unless you think it would be a better resource for you because it is such a workaround. Because parents have to click the reserve button, choose what day their child is going, and it doesn't matter which time slot they choose because it's really just a placeholder so that you know that that child is coming. Now, if you decide to go this route, you will not get the same roster information. You will have to pull it a little bit different to be able to know who's attending. But this isn't a bad workaround for those of you who have, as this group does, a maximum of like four people who would drop into a program and only want to pay for one day. This way you don't have to create programs per day. You just have to remember that this feature is allowing some people to sign up differently. So once you've decided how all that billing is going to go, you're going to finish entering your fees. Make sure that you check off to show them on the portal. If you have something that you control in-house, maybe it's a discount or a scholarship or something that you do on a per person basis where you have to verify that they've, they've covered all of these things to receive that discount, you can leave the add-on fee and not show it on the portal. 
But for those of you who have things like sibling discounts, that's the last piece that I want to get into when you are creating <clears throat> your fees. Because there's a couple ways you can do this. One is to just create an add-on fee name. So if the fee, if the program was 50, but it's $40 for the second child, you could add a sibling discount of negative 10. That would allow a parent to check out and say that this is the second, you know, this is their second child. They receive a $10 discount. The system is not going to guarantee that that parent actually had two kids and put one kid in at full price and then a second. Really, the Another way to take care of this, and I've been finding that this, this solution has been very helpful for <clears throat> to be less confusing for the public, is creating a first participant fee of $50 and then an additional participant fee. So when they register the first child, it's 50. And let's just say that the second child is, any child after that is going to cost 40. This is how you can also do that. Now, I named my fees first participant and additional participant because I'm going, I'm basing this off the idea of if you have two child, that's how much the sec or three child, you're only getting that $10 off for the second and third child's rate. You're not getting extra discounts. Now, if you say the first child is full rate, second child gets $10 off, and then let's just say that any child beyond that gets even more money off, maybe they're 30, you would want to create a fee name that would say first child, second child, and then however you want to label that uh, any third plus type of participant. That way you can create the fee structure here so that when the parents or the guardians are putting these children in at home, they're able to select the corresponding fee type. So once you have your fee set up, you're going to click save. And then you're going to go to your forms tab. If you have any forms that you require your campers to fill out, maybe it's a code of conduct, how you expect them to behave, uh, or it's an authorized pickup list that may also include um, whether they are able to walk home or ride home. We can get those types of questions responded to in a flex form. That's going to allow you to export that information onto its own Excel sheet so that you can actually have a pickup sheet for how people are allowed to go home or an authorized pickup list only. You'll have a little bit of control. But to assign a form for summer camps, we recommend that you make them shared because they're going to need to fill that form out multiple times. So I'm going to use this form, this medical information, an authorized pickup, and you want to make sure it's shared because if it's the same form for seven weeks of summer camp, they shouldn't have to answer the same questions. It'll just share their the same, the whatever they've responded across the board. And then make sure you hit save so that the program is attached. Now, the instructors tab. <clears throat> this is not necessary, but if you are assigning your instructors uh, to your programs and you want to do the same thing for your summer camps. Maybe you want to do this for your teenagers running your summer camps because you know that they'd be more likely to look at their phone to see who's on their roster or that's how you want them to take attendance. You want to come here to the instructor tab and click add instructor and then you want to connect them. You do not necessarily need to add a compensation scheme. This piece is just here for those of you who would like us to help calculate um, the rate to pay your instructors based off a percentage or a per student. And once you get your first summer camp built, you go back to the program info tab and you're able to click on this edit button and you can create a new program exactly like this one. And that's going to allow you to create summer camp week two. And the only thing you would need to update is anything date-wise that would need to be updated. If you allow a later enrollment or anything else, or if anything else, it's really just updating the schedule for it. So there is an active schedule on this program. 
Now I want to show you on the community site oops, two pieces. One, I want to show you first what it would look like for your instructors if they have instructor access and access to your roster. They're going to click the login as an instructor coach or volunteer. And once they log in, they're going to be able to go to their program list. Now this is all mobile friendly. So if they only have a cell phone, it's just going to look smaller like this. And they'll be able to pick the summer camp and then say actions and take today's attendance. And they're going to be able to check people off as they're coming in and hit save attendance. So they can continue to do this if uh, more and more children are, are showing up. They can just constantly update this. If they are using this piece of the system for attendance, it is updating immediately on the attendance tab within the director side. And the last piece is um, I want to just show you what it's going to look like when a community member logs in and tries to register for a summer camp. So I'm going to click on my programs tab and then I'm going to go to my summer camps. And then I'm going to click register now. Choose the person in the household. And this is how the fee types will show up. So this is why that first participant and additional participant phrasing can be very good to look at. If they want to pay later, they would check this box up. And choose the t-shirt size. Now when they hit save, they're going to go to checkout. This is your, your checkout waiver. Some of you have them. Some of you are using more of a flex form feature, but this is something that they must click I accept to to continue. Now this form is a shared document and one I've already filled out before. So that's why it's coming up as being uh, complete. For those of you who may have a very uh, large, supersized summer camp packet that you require parents to fill out, I highly recommend that you create a form response program that you let parents go in before camp season has started to give you the form responses. The reason being is that's going to take up time during checkout. So if you have a very high volume area, for people to register for your summer camps. Those who are tech savvy, they're gonna fly through this no problem, but those who aren't are gonna feel like they had, that the, those who are had an unfair advantage. So just keep that in mind when you're, when, when you're making your forms, that you wanna keep in mind how the community is going to feel when they fill it out. On the forms tab, you can submit a response and just see how it feels and see what it would look like and feel like to be a community member. So this is a nice and simple version. And then when they've completed all forms, uh, because I select to invoice me, it is now going here so that they can process now. And that's, so that puts me on the roster. And your forms, you can either print the forms out one by one or you can export them to Excel. When you export your flex forms to Excel, just a reminder, each one of your form questions, the question itself will be the column header and the rows will have all of the responses. And then you can click on roster actions if you wanted to print a roster to physically hand your instructors instead or if you wanted to export this full detail to Excel because you want to kind of create your own roster and what information you want to share. For those of you who may use that add-on fee feature, by the way, for them selecting which days of the week, you want to make sure that this option under registration information, add-on fees, you want to make sure that's checked off when you export it to Excel. Each column would say, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if there is a value in that box, it means they have signed up for that day of the week. And then you would just generate the, the, the Excel form 
and filter it to your specific needs outside of RecDesk. Now I'm going to pop over and see if we have any questions about setting up your summer camps. So I'm just going to start from the very beginning. So if I have already answered your question and I answer it again, I apologize. So Austin is asking, when adding the sibling discount, can we put a percentage versus a dollar amount? No, it needs to be a dollar value. We don't have the ability to do percentage discounts outside of point of sale. And point of sale only exists within point of sale as a reminder. So uh, if you would like, to, so please don't do your registrations on your point of sale system. Mike is asking if there's a way to mark that on the attendance once the child is picked up and no longer in your care. Uh, at this time, we don't have that type of, uh, I'm gonna call it a check out feature. Um, if you want to track when a child gets there and then when a child leaves, I highly recommend that instead of using the attendance feature, you use our check-in feature because you can check them in twice. You can say, Jennifer Lanzoni checked in at 8.01 a.m. and then you can check me in again at 5.05 because that's when I left the building. I understand it doesn't say a true checkout, but that same instance would allow you to be able to see what time they came in versus what time they left. Andy is asking, will using the custom program code feature make the program show up in a specific order on the community website? The custom program code is going to be taken into consideration when on the community site, the system's putting things in alphabetical order. So this is our, our demo site, so I apologize. I know it's got a lot of really weird, weird data in it, but see how this puts one, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three above the zero, one, two, three, four. Um, and actually, I apologize. I have a great example for this. Is it their summer camps? Um, who's that oh. So this group does an amazing job, as you can see, of putting things in order. Now, I'm going to go on to their youth because I'm going to assume that their youth has a little bit more of a an order to it. They're using program codes in order to keep everything in the order that they would like. Some of you, if you only care about it staying in order within um, like arts and crafts, if you only want it to stay in order within here, some people, what they're doing is in the custom program code, they are typing in the first date that the program runs. So they would type in the date like this and then the system will automatically put them in order based on that first start date. But this is the second child, so that's that, that they're allowed to use that discount. If you have a problem and you feel your public is, and you feel your public is using the discounted rate incorrectly, a lot of my customers, as a result of this, have told parents that they will not receive a discount until after registration has been complete. That way, you are in full control of being able to say, well, no, ma'am, you don't get to pay $40 because you've only signed one child up, not two. There's just that piece of it that you'll have that ability to control. Um, and that also works out better for some of you who have uh, as you were saying, the, some people were bringing up, you do a percentage discount. Some of you may even do a, if they sign up for all seven weeks, they get a discount versus signing up each week. That controlling those, those dis, discounts in-house or even saying that you'll refund them the difference in the value after registration is complete, those are really the best ways to resolve that issue and make sure that the, the public is not incorrectly choosing those, uh, the, the fees. You are welcome. If we have no other questions, then we can close the room. I'm going to leave this room open though for a few more minutes. That way, if anyone's still thinking about how to word their questions, they can go ahead and type them in. As a reminder, you can all reach us at support at rectest.com with any questions you may have or you can go to our support center right here and you can type in any questions you may have and be able to see any help articles. For those of you who may wanna watch this video tomorrow, it'll be available 
under the promoted article called Power Up with Rec Desk. This is going to be where our last uh, Power Up videos from YouTube will land. And you can filter through to see past Power Up ones. Well, I'll keep the room open for a few more minutes. That way, as if anyone else has any other questions, uh, we can go ahead and answer those. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.